About 11 a.m. now, this is the time when uh, I start getting a little bit grumpy and cranky because, because I'm hungry. All this food around me, but I can't enjoy any of it. They can eat, but I can't. I've been depriving myself of food for 16 hours a day for two months. Sounds crazy? Well, let me tell you why I did it. Two months ago, I was told this. So based on your height and your weight, yeah. the BMI, well, it's just a little more than it should be. Having just come off production for an episode on bubble tea, where I drank the sugar-laden beverage three times a week for an entire month, I was worried. So I have taken the hint, and I have decided to check with the Ministry of Health's online BMI calculator. If I put in my weight and my height, it puts me in the... Oh man... Moderate risk category. Now, that definitely doesn't sound too good. I want to get back into the low risk profile. If I need to get there, I need to lose... Wow, 8 kilograms. We've all heard about intermittent fasting. In fact, it has been one of the top weight loss trends in the past two years. And some people swear by it. I use it on and off when I feel fat, basically. I feel lighter and I don't put on weight as easily. So after doing IF, it helps me become lean and I can do the activities that I want, like calisthenics and rock climbing. So it seems like intermittent fasting may be my answer to weight loss, but there have been so many dieting trends out there, I wonder if all this really works. So for this episode of Talking Point, I decided to go on an intermittent fast to find out if it really works or if it's just another dieting trend. So what is intermittent fasting? Well, it's essentially fasting within specific time blocks or fasting windows, and there are several to choose from. There's 16-8, which means you fast for 16 hours and eat within 8 hours. 24, fast for 20 hours and eat within 4. One meal a day, normally eaten within a 2-hour window. Alternate day fast where you eat three meals as usual on one day and fast the other day. And finally, the 5-2 diet. Eat normally for five days and limit your calorie intake to about five to 600 for two days in the week. Before I begin my experiment, I want to know what happens to our body when we deprive it of food. And more importantly, what kind of a fasting window should I have? For some answers, I'm meeting Dr. Zokanian Abdul Hamid. He's an emergency medicine doctor who started intermittent fasting three years ago and lost more than 20 kilos in the first year. So what happens to our body when we fast? Okay, Steve, let's mm -hmm. imagine our body as a refrigerator with a chiller compartment as well as a freezer. We'll take the liver as a chiller, all right? It stores glycogen, which is an easily accessible form of energy storage. And we'll take the fat all over our body as the freezer. It's a denser form of energy storage. It's more difficult to access this energy form. When we fast, our body will first try to extract energy from the liver. That is not to say that the energy from the fat is not taken as well. But because it is less convenient, the rate at which the energy is being taken from the fat is definitely much lesser. When we feed, we start storing up both the freezer as well as the okay. chiller compartment. There's a twist. The twist is that the liver has limited storage. However, the fat or the freezer has unlimited capacity. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. What that means is that any excess energy that is not stored in the liver starts to get stored all over our fat storage. And that's how we actually gain fat if we eat too much. Is there an optimal way to burn the fat? We can do that by reducing our storage at the liver. And how do we do that? 
by prolonging our fast. You right. start depleting your liver probably after 12 to 24 hours. And once you start depleting your liver of its storage, now you start to tap on your okay. massive fat storage. So I'm thinking of starting this fast, but how would I know what would be best for me? Most of the studies with regards to intermittent fasting have people fasting at 16 hours and above. Okay. Based on what Dr. Zul has told me, I'm going to go with the 16-8 fasting window, which means every day for 16 hours I will fast, and then for the next 8 hours I get to have my meals within that time. All this for 2 months. Let's see, I could skip breakfast, have lunch and dinner with my family, or I could have brunch and an early dinner. So actually this, this could work. This really just might work. I'm having my experiment backed by science. So I'm getting my base health markers before I go on my fast. Hello, Hello Dr. Doctor. Dr. Pua Ling Yao is a family physician with an interest in weight management. He measures my height, weight, and body fat percentage. My waist circumference, liver profile, and cholesterol levels were also taken. And with that, I'm all set to begin my intermittent fast for the next two months. Wish me luck! I start off my challenge feeling optimistic. It seems very doable. But as the days go by, I'm getting headaches, feeling cranky, and just not too happy about skipping my favourite meal of the day. It's tough to get the engine started in the morning. It's really tough. I've been on an intermittent fast. I'm doing it to lose some weight and investigating if this diet, which seems to be trending right now, really works. I'm on my way now to my next filming venue. It's going to be tough because it's about 10.30 in the morning, I haven't had breakfast and I'm going to a hawker centre. So I've just come off the weighing machine and it's been two weeks and you know what? Actually, there's been no change. My weight is still the same. Uh, except I am feeling a bit more lethargic these days, so that isn't great. Uh, well, I, I guess I'm, I'm hoping in time, soon, that I will actually see some kind of results. Fingers crossed. Maybe I'm not doing this right. I need some help. And I know just the person for it. Corey Cruz is a moderator of the Intermittent Fasting Lifestyle Facebook group that has more than 150,000 members globally. The advertising creative says she lost a whopping 15 kilos thanks to intermittent fasting and exercise. So I need your advice because I'm on this intermittent fasting thing, it's early days, you know, and I find that I'm hungry all the time. I'm feeling a bit tired. So it's quite normal actually to not feel great the first few weeks. Really? We're just so used to eating so many times during the day. So it helps to drink a lot of water. So what were some of the things you were doing wrong when you first started fasting? So when I first started fasting in 2018, I actually didn't realize that I was breaking my fast early. Every morning I thought I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna fast and I'm just gonna have a coffee. Yeah. But I ended up with a large caramel macchiato and I didn't realize that that was 300 calories. Ah, okay, okay. I'm having my coffee now, but it's just black coffee with no sugar, no milk. Yeah, that's right? great. So, that's what you should be taking. Or you could have black tea or green tea, still with no okay. sugar or milk. I've been on IF for about two to three weeks now, but I haven't really seen any results. So what you can do if you've already been doing IF for a little while and it's not going as fast as you okay. would like, you could start taking a look at your diet, for instance. So in fact, I've uh, taken a whole bunch of photos, some of the things I've been eating over the last two weeks. It really is, as you can see, quite a plethora of different things. 
That looks delicious. <laughs> Unfortunately, it also looks like it's very high fat, very high calorie, and very little protein. So what helps with intermittent fasting, actually, is having a higher amount of protein in your diet. Because protein is going to help sustain you longer throughout the day, so you're not going to be hungry. I'm guessing you're going to say skip the carbs, right? No, I actually enjoy carbs. Okay. You need carbs. You need to have a balanced diet. It's not about cutting stuff out completely. And I don't actually deprive myself of things. A lot of us in my Facebook group ascribe to the 80-20% rule, which is 80% right. healthy, 20% just treats. So we're going to have a cake, we're going to have a pizza. IF is a lifestyle, and you have to integrate it into your lifestyle. Otherwise, it's not sustainable. So just because I am on an intermittent fast, it doesn't mean I can go on a binge. If I want to lose some weight, I'll still need to watch what I eat. But that's easier said than done. When you haven't been eating for 16 hours, well, your mouth rules your head. I clearly need help. Dr. Mary Chong researches weight loss diet interventions and eating behavior in adults and infants. She is going to show me how to trick my brain into eating smart. Hi, Mary. Oh, hello, Steve. Good to see you. You too. Have you had lunch? No, I haven't. And I'm looking forward to eating, okay, I think. Perfect. Shall we get some lunch? Can I have one bitter nice fish? Take the bone soup. Give me a second. Okay, this is a chai. A chicken. Curry, gravy. Okay, no problem. Okay, that's it. Lunch. Ah. Okay, I'm all set for lunch. So, before I tuck in, any tips for me before yes, I Yes, hang on. Actually, it's, as part of intermittent fasting, it's uh -huh. often to be well hydrated. Okay. Because people often mistake thirst for hunger. So I yeah. should have a drink before I start yes. eating? Yes, um, it'd be helpful to have a glass of water okay. or even some clear soup to fill your tummy. And this would usually help you reduce hunger and it helps uh, you to control your portion size. So in a way, I'm tricking my stomach mm -hmm. by putting something else in there besides yes. food. Yes, exactly. It can be quite challenging when eating out, yeah, uh -huh. especially when you're trying to break fast. So one way is to actually ask for half the portion. But I'm just imagining my plate would look a bit empty and a bit sad, mm. you know? Not very visually enticing, right? But let me tell you a trick. Uh-huh. Yes. There's evidence to suggest that the sizes of plates or even bowls glasses and even spoons yeah. can unconsciously influence the amount of food people eat just by changing the size of their plates. Actually, I have some examples here. Okay, so I have two plates here. If you put exactly the same amount of food yeah. into this normal size plate, it's the same, the same size as the plate I have. Yeah. And then compared to that in this plate, okay, so I that's see same. what you mean. In a large plate, food tends to appear lesser. So therefore, it encourages people to pile things more right. on, right? In contrast, in smaller plates, food appear to be greater in amount. And so that can actually help in terms of reducing intake. Well, I am going to tuck in. You should learn to slow down and eat mindfully. What do you mean by eat mindfully? Eating mindfully means paying attention to the mm. food you eat and also the feeling of fullness you get from the food. And this is important because our brain takes about 20 minutes to register that we are full oh. after eating. So if you can actually slow down, then you get to be aware of the sense of fullness and that can help prevent overeating. I've also heard of some people who have been doing intermittent fasting for so long that they're down to just one meal a day. I mean, any danger in that? There's actually a real danger of becoming uh -huh. malnourished if one takes intermittent fasting too far. So for example, um, taking calorie restriction to an extreme right. or constantly omitting certain food groups. This can actually lead to a person being deficient in certain nutrients and causing him or her to be fatigued or have a weakened immune system, poor wound healing, losing muscle mass or even getting depressed. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Besides the danger of overdoing it, intermittent fasting can also harm those who are pregnant, under 18 or have a low BMI. Now that I know how and what to eat, I'm putting all the advice I got into action. Coffee's ready. <sighs> More black coffee than usual in the morning to stave off the hunger pangs. Plain black coffee with no sugar and no milk. <sighs> it 
It's lunchtime, 12.30 in the afternoon, but I'm gonna see if I can push it till at least 1.30 before I have my lunch so that I can enjoy a late dinner tonight. But sometimes the stomach is weak. So it's about 9.30 in the evening and I'm only halfway through my dinner. So tonight, I think, yeah, forget about the fasting. I'm just gonna dig in and eat, eat, eat. As the weeks go by, I'm inching closer to the big reveal. I'll find out if my two months of intermittent fasting has produced any results. It's been six weeks since I started intermittent fasting. So we're still doing some filming for the show, and as you can see... I've learned to cope with the hunger pangs during the day. It's about 8 o'clock in the evening now, and we are still filming, as you can see in the back. But with my irregular working hours, it's a challenge to have my meals within the 8-hour window every day. <sighs> oh. So it's been a long day of filming. I just got home. It's about 10.30 in the evening, and... I was wondering if I could go for the rest of the night without any food. Well, the answer is no. Since I struggle keeping to the same number of fasting and eating hours every day, I wonder if I should pair intermittent fasting with a specific diet to achieve better results. There are so many diet trends out there right now. From the keto diet, a high-fat, very low-carbohydrate way of eating, to the vegan diet, where you only eat plants or foods made from plants. Then there's the paleo diet, which mimics what caveman would have eaten, so you eat only whole foods that could have been hunted or gathered. The gluten-free diet simply means not eating anything that has gluten, including wheat, rye and barley. I want to understand the differences between these diets because I wonder if there could be one diet most suited for me while I'm on my intermittent fast. Assistant Professor Verena Tan is a dietitian with a research interest in improving health through personalized diets. She's going to help me break down the different types of diets out there. As you know, I am on an intermittent fast, so I'm here to ask you, how can I maximize the results from that fast? Is there anything specifically that I should or should not be eating? Theoretically, if you combine intermittent fasting with a ketogenic diet, which mm -hmm. is essentially a low-carbohydrate and a high-fat diet, both of these combined may enhance the effectiveness of you reaching ketosis or the fat-burning stage faster. But that being said, this combined approach has not been studied or proven to work and you may also have the side effects of both diets. For ketogenic diet, you may have bad breath from what we call a halitosis. You may have constipation or diarrhea, muscle cramps and headaches. So these are some of the side effects of following diet trends. So if you combine intermittent fasting with a keto diet, it sounds like I would be a pretty horrible person to be around. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> see me stepping yeah. a few steps away <laughs> okay. from you. Yeah, we try to stay clear of a ketogenic diet, not only of the side effects, but also we are not sure what are the long-term safety and the sustainability. Right. Okay, then what about these other diets? Are any one of them better than the other for someone who is fasting? Let's take a look at the paleo diet. So essentially, no processed foods. Okay. But one thing to note is that paleo does not allow any cereals, grains or dairy products. And is that a bad thing? Uh, yes, because for anyone following a paleo diet may be at risk of lower bone density because they are not consuming any dairy products. What about a vegan diet? So a vegan diet is considered an ethical way and a healthy mm -hmm. way of eating. Studies have shown that a vegan diet does improve some of the risk factors for chronic diseases. For example, your glucose level, your cholesterol levels. But they can be considered unhealthy depending on the types of food that you choose. For example, foods that are high in sugar, like sugar-sweetened beverages, mm. processed foods like potato chips are mm. also considered vegan. Another downside of a vegan diet is that you may run the risk of vitamin and mineral deficiency 
if you don't choose um, or plan your meal properly. And what about a gluten-free diet? So a gluten-free diet was created for people who are formerly diagnosed with celiac disease. So it is a condition where people cannot digest wheat-containing products, for example, breads, your pastries, your cakes. Okay. But for people who are not gluten-sensitive, like yourself and me, studies have shown that a gluten-free diet does not improve health in any way. So to improve health, my take-home would be less is more. Less so, is more. Ah. Less calories, less processed food, and less time spent eating. So that is probably the key to better health. <laughs> Every trending diet has its pros and cons. And pairing them with intermittent fasting may not make me healthier or help me accelerate my weight loss. Hmm, I guess I'll just have to try my best to stick to my fasting and eating windows. It's been eight weeks since I started on my intermittent fasting experiment. It has been challenging to say the least, but it's now coming to an end. I'm back here at Dr. Pua's clinic and I'm excited to see the results. I mean, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling more energetic, so I'm hoping the numbers will back me up. Well, doctor, I am anxious and excited to find out what the results say. So please, tell yes. me. So Stephen, most are good news, okay. okay, for you. You lost weight, you lost 3 kg. Oh. And with the weight loss, your waist circumference also came down from 92 to 86. Oh, <laughs> woohoo! Yes. And body fat also reduced quite a significant bit from 24.1% to 18. Okay. Yes. And your visceral fat also reduced by 1 from 9 to 8. So that literally so, is the extra fat hugging my organs. Yes, that really reduces your cardiovascular risk ah, in general. I see. You should really pat yourself on the shoulder. I will. Yes. That sounds good. Yes. <laughs> woohoo! But that's one part oh, of it always, that's bad. There's always a but. Okay, <laughs> yes, tell yes, me. Yes. Your bad cholesterol went up. Okay, that was already so, bad. Now it is yes, even worse. Better. <laughs> oh man. The likely cause? Perhaps some overindulgence in unhealthy hawker food these past two months to make up for missing out on my favourite meal of the day. So does intermittent fasting work? Well, from my own experience, it sure does. But I need to be really disciplined because as the results clearly show, it's not just about eating less. If I want to be healthy, I also need to pay more attention to just what it is I'm eating as well.